Hey folks, today we're going to be talking about the specs inside of the Nintendo Switch 2, or whatever they decide to call it, right? We don't actually know the naming convention, we just know it's in development. Nintendo told us they were working on new hardware, so we know that this is in development. And we actually have some information about what the actual specs of this system is going to be, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. It's going to get pretty technical. I'm also going to, towards the end, make it much more simplified. If you just want the too long, didn't watch version here, this thing is going to be more powerful than a Steam Deck. In fact, it's pretty much going to be an Xbox Series S, but possibly even better. What? That's insane. How is Nintendo doing that and not charging $500, $600? We're going to get into that, but before we do, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers, and if we can get there by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we will be giving away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom. So what are you waiting for? Why don't you drop that like, hit the subscribe, and let's get on to the rest of this video. Now, I want to give a big shout out for all of this information to Fami Boards, and I'm going to link to a couple of posts made there from some people I've been conversing with behind the scenes in Zomble and the Old Puck. They really helped really gather all the information, break it down, and you're going to hear some of my thoughts as well once we get through everything, but let's just get into a couple of things. We're going to kind of break this down twice because there's two different approaches to how you want to look at this. So last year, NVIDIA was actually hacked. NVIDIA themselves confirmed the hack was legit, and in the hack was source code for what amounts to the graphics driver for a new Nintendo console. The driver gives very clear parameters on what this is, and while it's probably been updated since the hack, major design changes are highly unlikely given the state of the driver was found in, which was basically a near final working state. This hack helped reconfirm the chip being used is codenamed Dr Drake, aka the T239 chip. It uses Ampere architecture, which is what is used in the NVIDIA 3000 series of GPUs. It supports ray tracing, DLSS, and has 12 streaming multiprocessors. A Linux kernel update to the T239 confirmed that it has an octo-core CPU and is related to, but different than, the Orin chip, which NVIDIA uses in self-driving cars, but is derived from the same line of chips Nintendo Switch uses in the Tegra X1. So to break that down, the chip discovered in the hack for the new Nintendo system has a direct relation back to the same line of chips that created the Tegra X1. Linux code for the T239 showed it uses very similar driver architecture to the Orin self-driving chip, except that it stripped out all the car elements and added in file decompression systems for video games, probably related to decompressing textures directly to memory, as that is a performance tool other consoles have used in the past. As we know, all trusted sources, including big name journalists, have confirmed that this is a new Switch and not a wildly different concept system. Reasonable assumptions on some of the things get into a little bit of brass tacks. This is just assumptions. These assumptions come from the old puck. He says 8 gigabytes of RAM, and it's going to likely be LPDDR5, as that matches what is used in Orin, a chip we do know everything about. In the NVIDIA hack, which contained MVN2, the architecture behind Switch's new device, it mentioned 128-bit member bus, which is half of what Orin has. Due to how widely this RAM is used, Nintendo can get bulk orders for very cheap, and it's even suggested 12 gigabytes due to the manufacturing process may indeed be even cheaper, though then you have to contend with more heat. 12 gigabyte is certainly possible, but we should expect at least twice as much RAM at minimum to the current Switch. The clock speeds of the GPU are likely going to be about the same as Switch, or at least in the ballpark. Instead of 300 megahertz in handheld, it could be around 420 to 460, with the top end in dock mode possibly hitting 840 to 920. Could be obviously be higher, but we don't know for sure. These are technically very tiny bumps from the Switch, but it puts it in the same thermal range. The great part is, with DLSS 2.0, especially in docked mode, you can almost 2x the GPU output, so it would feel much more powerful than the clocks actually suggest. Of course, clock speeds are sometimes overblown. There's a lot more going on inside a GPU that will already make it feel way 
way more powerful. CPU-wise, there are a few options that may be in the chip, but only one that really makes sense, and that's the A78C, which is a variant of the Orin CPU specifically designed for gaming. It's a pretty big upgrade over the Switch's current A57 cores. Benchmarks indicate at similar clock speeds, it performs as well as the PlayStation 5's Zen 2 cores. However, it will likely have clock speeds similar to the current Switch, this is because 8 cores at similar clock speeds consumes the same amount of power as the Switch's current A57. Difference is, twice as many cores. Twice the compute power, with better cooling solutions possibly giving Nintendo future headrooms should they want. The only caveat to all of this is Drake does appear to, in general, draw more power than the current Switch. The GPU is pretty power hungry. It's not impossible for this to be the next chip, but Nintendo will have to make considerations. Bigger battery is one way to combat this, and maybe the most practical way, depending. Let's get this now a bit more simplified into some direct comparisons of the OG Switch and this system. These comparisons were provided by Zomble. Again, credit to Family Boards. Thank you so much for all of this. Uh, so for the CPU, in the original Switch, we have a Tegra X1 with four A57 cores clocked at around one gigahertz, and one of those cores is reserved for the OS. So you get about three cores. In the Switch 2, there will be eight 78C cores that will be clocked anywhere from one to two gigahertz, and one core reserved from the OS. You can obviously see how that's going to make a big difference. Since A78C is three times faster than the A57 cores per clock, this means the CPU is basically seven to 14 times, it's going to depend on what they clock it at, the performance of the Switch. Technically, these cores can outperform what's in the PlayStation 5, but they will be downclocked and instead probably be slightly above 50% of the available resources for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Things do look pretty good, though, when comparing to Steam Deck. If, if the core hits a clock of 2 gigahertz, which could happen in dock mode, it would be about 70% of the same performance seen in the Steam Deck. That's not one-to-one, -one, but also Switch 2 is probably going to be cheaper than the Steam Deck. In the OG Switch for RAM, there is 4 gigabytes that has a 64-bit memory bus for LPDDR4 or 4X with 20 gigabytes a second in handheld and 25 gigabytes a second in docked with 800 megabytes reserved for the operating system. In Switch 2 with the T239, there would at least be 8 gigabytes, possibly up to 16, probably 12, but either way, there'll be at least 8 of 128-bit memory bus of LPDDR5 that will be at least 60 gigabytes a second in handheld and probably 102 gigabytes a second or more in docked. It would be about 3 to 4x the capacity uh, slash speed of the current Switch. In docked mode, 102 gigabytes per second is pretty much in line with the PlayStation 5 because of the architecture advantage of this RAM compared to Sony's. Basically, that's important to know because it's going to make porting games from PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X easier. Now, for storage, we don't really know anything. We can make some assumptions, but nothing's really known because it hasn't been talked about. Uh, GPU-wise, the Switch uses a Tegra X1 with 256 Maxwell CUDA cores, uh, clocked at 460 megahertz in handheld mode and 769 megahertz in docked mode for 235 G-flops and 393 G-flops, respectively. For the uh, Switch 2, the T2... 3.9 has 1,536 Ampere CUDA cores clocked at around 660 megahertz and 1,125 megahertz in, you know, handheld and docked mode for about two teraflops and 3.456 teraflops of performance. Respectively, there's also 48 Tensor cores and 12 RT cores. This would outperform the PlayStation 4 without even considering DLSS. Also in docked mode, the GPU should basically outperform what's in the Xbox Series S. It'll be pretty close, though. Here is a more layman breakdown uh, if you don't know what to do with all these numbers. Uh, the Switch 2 CPU is somewhere around Steam Dex. It's a little slower, but it's in the ballpark. It has more cores, same threads, but less clock. So, you know, 70 to 85% of Steam Deck. Uh, Switch 2's GPU in handheld should offer similar, but better performance over Steam Deck, 130 to 200% in comparison. Switch 2's GPU in docked mode should match or exceed the Xbox Series S, thanks to DLSS being superior to FSR 2, 
at 80 to 100 percent switch choose ram is three to four times the capacity and speed of switches and should fit well with current gen consoles and switch choose storage is probably about four times faster than switches and load time should shrink but again we don't have any concrete information on this we're just basing it on the possibilities of the architecture rather than the actual storage being used so in other words this thing would kind of be a steam deck but better especially in docked mode and would perfectly align with getting modern day ports in a much sleeker user friendly package so that's really the big takeaway is that it looks like Nintendo Switch 2 is going to be better than the Steam Deck. It's going to be sleeker. It's going to be a better package. It's going to be about in the ballpark of as powerful in, of it and handheld. But when you dock it, it's going to clearly have a massive advantage. And yes, this is just my opinion. Looking at all this, I think Nintendo should be able to package this for about $399. But that's going to be up to Nintendo for the pricing structure because we obviously don't know what contracts they have. The longer they wait to release this, of course, the cheaper things will get. And that could also be why, hey, we're looking at the second half of 2023, maybe 2024, because the longer Nintendo waits, the cheaper the parts get, and the more affordable it is to release such a platform to the public. They do not like releasing platforms that where they lose money on sales. So take this for what you will. Uh, again, none of this is 100% this is what it's going to be. We know that the T239 is the chip that's going to be used. We know that, but there's a lot of, here's what the chip is capable of versus what do we think is going to happen with the Nintendo Switch itself. So uh, you guys, let me know what you think about this. Did you enjoy this highly technical, uh, but super fun breakdown of the actual you know, specs of the Nintendo Switch 2? Uh, and if you would like to see more videos like this in the future as more information becomes available, because as more information becomes available, because Nintendo, by the way, doesn't give us anything. Even when they announce this system, they're not going to tell us what the hell's in it, right? Like Nintendo doesn't talk specs. They're not Sony and Microsoft where they tout all these technical things. Nintendo at best will say, hey, we have 4K, not even explaining that it's through DLSS or, or any of this stuff. So here we go. You guys let me know if you want an update on this in the future as more information becomes available. But as of today, these are the currently known specs for Nintendo's next generation device. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.